Good afternoon, welcome to RSL Today. My name's Keith Harrison, I'm Commemorations and Fundraising Manager for RSL South Australia and with me in the studio is our Program Director, David Lies. David, uh, you're you're looking very well today. Good afternoon, Keith. How are you, my friend? I'm well, thanks. Don't you like this finer weather? No. Oh, okay. (laughs) Yeah, it's not bad. It's very good, actually. But I understand that we've got, we're in the grip of La Nina. Oh, El La. El El Nino, Ninia and La Nina, I think, are the two. Okay. And we've got the the wet one. I think that's what it is. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, how are you? Yep. Uh, well, thanks, mate. Looking good again. Always. Always looks impeccably dressed. Amazing. Thank you very much. <laughs> and uh, with us in the studio is the amazing regular visitor, Major Sharon Masquadere. How are you going? Welcome, Sharon. Good afternoon. Or good evening, I should say. No, well, good afternoon. Could be either. Could no, be either. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, good evening, good yeah. afternoon. Lovely to be here, gentlemen. Yeah, You're well. People can be listening to us uh, through the YouTube account uh, online any time of the day. Overseas. Overseas. Yeah. Tasmania. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah. yeah. Indeed. Kangaroo Indeed. Island. Yeah. Indeed. Hopefully. Look, I'll get, um, we've got lots to talk to Sharon about. So yes, we have. Uh, let's, uh, let's get into the phone uh, numbers A little bit of housekeeping, yeah. Yes. Uh, RSL State Branch is at the Torrens Parade Ground, uh, corner of King William Road and Victoria Drive in Adelaide, opposite Elder Park, sort of diagonally opposite uh, Adelaide Oval, not far from Jolly's, so that big white building. Yeah. Our phone number is 8100 7300. Email is admin at rslsa.org.au. Our website is rslsa.org.au. And we're huge on Facebook. And we're pretty good on Instagram and Twitter. And speaking of the big white building, the steering committee are getting towards the wind down of their inquiry in to what to do with it. Yeah, there's an opportunity for people to, to participate in a survey through the state government, Your Say. Yes, that's correct. Uh, yeah. So they can go to our Facebook and link to it or Veterans SA yes. uh, and yep. link to it and find it a bit more. But yes, they've been going for se- several weeks now, the... Uh, steering committee, lots of people have made submissions, ex-service organisations, community groups, the tenants. Yeah. So what the Premier wants is to see a plan, shall we say, yeah, a, yeah. A, a recommendation for what should happen to that precinct, which is the Torrens Training Depot, the Torrens Parade Ground, the surrounds. He'd like it to be um, uh, a money contributor. Uh, well, a, a I fund think contributor. Realistically, I think it has to be at some stage, and whether it's whatever. Let's I mean, not speculate. No, you can, you can, well, no. you can't. No. It's just so open ended. It could be anything. But I think it does have to return something to the government. What that is, uh, financially, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll find out. Yeah, it's an expensive but building it is to maintain. There was, there was a, yeah. uh, a forum in the mess uh, earlier today, um, yep. uh, this Thursday. Uh, I wasn't at it, so I haven't heard any reports. But no. Well, we've put our submission in uh, in yeah. relation to what our involvement, what we want our involvement to be. Um, and I know that um, RSL have, Air Force Association have, Vietnam Vets have, and a lot of other organisations, ESOs, have also contributed, as you said earlier. So it should be very interesting. Well, very good. Yeah. yeah, David, a bit of exciting news for this coming Sunday, the 5th. It is, yes. There is the inaugural cricket friendship game between Afghan interpreters who now live here in South Australia uh, and uh, former ADF, might even be some serving ADF amongst yeah. them, the Wounded Warriors 11. The cricket so. friendship Game. Yeah, I reckon it's a great idea. Out at Kilburn Oval. Yeah. Do you know about that, Sharon? I don't, but I my ears have pricked up on I, hearing I about that. I saw you snap your head around. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> In fact, because um, years ago when I was still working as a journalist, um, I did quite a bit of work with some of the Afghan um, community yeah. here mm. in, in oh, South wow. Australia. So I've got enormous yeah. respect for many of the people involved with that. How, how have they worded oh. it, David? Is it to make the, the interpreters feel welcome to settle in um, South Australia or have they touched th- on that? I think that's the underlying yeah. aim. And w- with the, the printout you've given me here, it just says, this friendship cricket match will bring together Afghan interpreters and Australian Defence Force veterans in order to acknowledge all those who served in, Afan- in Afghanistan. Sorry about that. 
veterans and interpreters, and support those who are struggling with the aftermath of military operations. The release of the Brereton Report and the fall of Afghanistan to the Taliban. Yeah. So they're, they're building bridges, and that's what they're doing over there. Yeah. And they're still building the bridges, and I think good on them. Um, and I think if they get a lot of people there, it'll be great. Yeah, the man behind it is Harry Moffat, and Harry is a, a long-time uh, SAS operative. Uh, done many tours overseas, and each tour he went on, he took a cricket bat. Yeah, and he, it's a great leveler. He said, "Kids will come and play, villagers will come and play." Uh, so he's got eleven bats, and he's written a book called Eleven, 11 bats, bats, which yeah. uh, I well, we, recommend. We actually, yeah, we mentioned that on the program a few weeks back. Yeah, so yeah, it should be very, very interesting. So that's the fifth of December. Um, it doesn't give me a time. Um, Look, it kicks off around one thirty. Yes, one forty p.m. Sorry, yeah. uh, the game is actually from two to six. Yeah. But they've got the coin toss and yeah. all the palaver. Yeah. So it's at the Kilburn Cricket Club, Lionel Avenue at Blair Athol. Um, captain of the interpreters is Siddiqui. Good luck with that one. No, Siddiqui Samandakan. I hope that's the correct pronunciation. Apologies if it's not. Uh, and. Captain of the Wandering Warriors 11, <laughs> what a name, the Wandering Warriors, um, is Harry Moffat. Yeah, so good luck to so, Harry, yeah. the organisers, all the participants, and uh, uh, if you get the opportunity, please go along. It's a Sunday afternoon. I think it'll be good fun. I, I reckon yes. it'll be great, great yeah. family entertainment. Yeah, it would. Yeah. I'm going to snap a quick photograph of that little uh, fly that you've given oh, look, out no, there, David. Please do, please and, do. And um, I'll share that with a few yeah. of my friends in it's, town. It's on Facebook. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's fantastic. It's on our Facebook, um, on our website, uh, the RSL website. Um, I haven't seen it. Oh, there's a few places it's going around. So what a great yeah, idea. No, it's good. Uh, now, do you want to mention anything else? Oh, yes. Uh, Veterans SA have released a, a strategic outlook 2021 yes. to 2031 as their commitment to ensure a well-supported and represented veteran community in South Australia. So you can view that uh, on the Veterans SA website or the RSLSA Facebook uh, site. So I'd also like to congratulate the Virtual War Memorial for their mm. um, illuminating of, of the Torrens training. It was wonderful, building, wasn't it? Leading up to Remembrance Day. Did you get to see it at all, Sharon? I did. I took a drive Pretty down there special, one evening. It? it was spectacular. Yeah. Really spectacular. Yeah. I mean, all credit to them for yes. getting that yes. together because there's Definitely. a lot of work goes into those My kinds word. of initiatives. And those great big, huge projectors that were on the program, they were, they were great. Yeah. yeah, so that's all we, good. I didn't see it, but I some friends of ours went yeah. And they just sat back on the on the lawns yeah. um, at, at the King William Road end. Yeah. They just sat and watched it. Wasn't it wasn't just static; it was moving. Some of it very yeah. slowly. There's people I recognised up there, and it went th pretty well through from Boer War to uh, uh, to present day. So con congratulations I've, to I've, them. I've, I've heard it said you know personally some Boer War veterans. No. <laughs> No, Th those men were elderly and travelling in uh, Land Rovers w when I was a <laughs> when I were a lad. <laughs> And you would remember them probably still on their feet. Yeah, a bit older than you. Yeah. yeah. I still remember some of the World War One diggers, you know, on Anzac Day. Do you remember all the one-legged men yes. you used to see around the city yes. with, with their, you know, do we have, jacket and tie? Do we have time for a very, very quick anecdote? All right, let's anecdote. do that. Um, I had an Auntie May way, way back in the day, my, my grandma's sister, and we would go and visit them. They lived down at Kilburn, somewhere down that way. And I would I was a little four or five year old and I was stunned by all these people sitting on the front porch with one trouser mm. leg folded yeah, up, all folded one up. arm folded up yeah. and, and I, I didn't know who they were. And mum said to me, Oh, they're from the from the war. I'm there, Oh, okay. Now I didn't have a clue, you know, four or five. And they were World War One veterans. Yeah. I wish I'd known them. I wish I'd been able to speak to them. You know, but as a five, four-year-old, five-year-old, you can't. Yeah. You know, you just yeah. don't know. No. But, no. They, they but it were... leaves a lasting impression on a person. Yeah, it and, did. I, I'm, yeah. Here I am, nearly 70. And that just st yeah. that stayed in my brain. Yeah. You know, it's amazing. There you go. And my uncle, my uncle Frank, he was one of the ones who came back. Yeah. And I think he'd lost an arm. Yeah. can't remember. Yeah. Yeah. Let's um, Sharon. Uh, speak with Sharon. Uh, here you go. Exciting times. It's been a few months since we've seen you. Yeah. Indeed, yeah. indeed. So um, lots to talk to you about. Um, 
I might. Um, I've got some great stuff to share about Army, yes. but I might actually save that for because I know that we might be have the chance to have me back next week. We yes. would love to have you back next week. Well, that'd yes. be awesome. Yes. Um, so what I might just share um, is just a bit of an update on the work that um, Military and Emergency Services Health Australia um, have been doing through the Story Right and Mind Right programs yep. that we've talked about before. Um, essentially, we ran two workshops last week. Um, so I flew up to Townsville and delivered um, a story write workshop um, to some um, army uh, personnel who are leaving defence, who are looking to discharge. That was last Monday. And then um, on Friday, we had a workshop here in Adelaide. And what was fantastic is, of course, we've had the last two years with COVID restrictions, when we've not been able to meet face to face, and it's been really quite challenging. You know, how do you deliver a face to face work face to face workshop, which is all about, you know, um, supporting people to to get their story straight in terms of how they're going to translate their skills, their military skills, in the way that a civilian audience will understand. And trying to do that when you can't actually meet people, no. it's been really difficult. So. This was a great opportunity last week for us to actually be in the same room, run a couple of workshops and, and just to see the um, the transformation in people. And, and it's always the same kind of reactions we get in that we have guys and girls turn up in the morning, you know, sometimes they're not quite sure if the workshop's going to be right for them. And then by about 11 o'clock in the morning, when we actually get into that skills translation, and in particular last week, um, the real gold came from these fantastic um, rank skills um, translation guides, which have been released by the Australian Defence College. And they've actually been in circulation now for a good sort of 18 months, two years, but nobody knows anything about them. And what they do is they take your rank within the Defence Force and then they kind of have the rank at the top and then they have a sort of a, a number of kind of skills categories down the side, whether it might be leadership or personnel management or, um, you know, accountability for resources, that kind of thing. And then they have, that, they have the exact sentence that you can say depending on your rank in terms of what that then means um, in the civilian world, particularly for going for a civilian job. And just to see the look on some of the, you know, the participants' faces when they saw these guys and thought, oh, my goodness. So I used to be a sergeant. I've been out, you know, in army. I've been out maybe, I don't know, sort of um, five, ten years. Um, I had no idea that my skills still had value. And there it was, black and white, um, as endorsed and fully researched by the Australian Defence College. Absolutely, their skills oh, have value. Well done to them. I saw that on the Veterans SA website, but I didn't click on it and I didn't download it, view it or anything. But now you've explained it, that makes sense for uh, of what it is. It's a correlation. Yeah. May I ask you a question without notice? Of course. Um, is it a trickle leaving defence or is it is it a flood? I mean, yeah, you, you're doing these courses... How many people are actually leaving defence on a monthly basis? And if you can't ask for that, not a problem. I don't know the number. I'm aware that um, from statistics I had um, about a year ago, if I remember rightly, it was 347 had a discharged month. in a year in, a year. in That's South not Australia. A lot. That's very good, actually, yeah. isn't it? So that was, as I say, that was about a year, 18 months ago, and that was in one year, 347. South Australia. In South yeah. Australia. So obviously then nationally, I think the figure, if I remember that. rightly, was around nationally around yeah. 5,000. Because obviously you've got a lot more yeah, um, defence populations on density, the east yeah. coast, yeah, and also yeah, obviously you've sure. got Darwin and Perth exactly, as well, and yeah. Tasmania. Yeah, no, that's great. Yeah. Sharon, as you alluded to earlier, we'd like to invite you back for next year. We've uh, next week. <laughs> we'll, awesome. Plenty to talk I'd about. I'd be delighted I to come back. I hope you come back. back next year as well. But yeah. <laughs> No, I'd love to come back next week. And I've got some great stuff to share about Army, well, so I look forward to that opportunity. Right. So we're going to say good afternoon, are we? I'll say good afternoon. Well, I'll say good afternoon. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.